Heat transfer in process plants can be quite complex and happen through conduction, convection, or radiation. Many units, such as heat exchangers, often have composite walls that force heat to pass through multiple layers and can be of different thickness or thermal conductivity. And also, with time, solid deposits can form on pipes, causing additional resistance to heat transfer. Nonetheless, heat transfer processes can be summarized using this equation. The heat transfer per unit time Q is equal to the overall heat transfer coefficient U times the area A times the temperature gradient delta T. The units will be watts for our Q, which is energy per unit time. It will be meter squared for the area. And we'll use Kelvin for our uh, delta T, which is the driving force in, the, in heat transfer processes. And the units of U, the overall heat transfer coefficient, will be watts per meter squared per Kelvin. This term U is really what's summarizing all the factors mentioned earlier, all the resistance to heat transfer. So it's very important to understand it and be able to calculate it properly. Let's look at how we can evaluate U when heat is being transmitted through a number of media in series. So say we have a wall which is composed of this first layer, but then we add to it a second layer, and then even a third layer, which is a composite wall, where uh, heat is flowing from this side, so it goes from left to right through all these layers. The heat will always flow from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. So there's a delta T, a driving force for the process that spans over the entire wall. Each layer is a different medium with its own uh, individual heat transfer coefficient H. And this means that the overall heat transfer process with its temperature gradient can be split into three, one per layer with corresponding delta T's. Delta T1 for the first layer, delta T2 for the second layer, and delta T3 for the final layer. Two important considerations to be made are one, that the area available for heat flow A is the same at every layer. So A is always the same. And two, there is no heat accumulation happening uh, throughout the entire process. No heat accumulation, which is very important because this tells us that Q that we used in the equation uh, is constant. So the amount of heat per unit time meeting the first wall is equal to the heat per unit time uh, leaving the last wall. So each uh, medium has a different heat transfer coefficient, which means we can write three different equations where Q and A are the same. So Q equals H1 times A times delta T1, and we can also write that Q equals H2 times A times delta T2. And then similarly, Q equals H3 times A times delta T3. These three equations can be rearranged for their delta t's uh, to find that delta t1 equals q over a h1 and delta t2 equals q over a h2. And delta t3 equals q over a h3. So adding up all these temperature changes will give us our uh, overall delta T. So delta T equals to delta T1 plus delta T2 plus delta T3. And if we sum the right-hand sides of each of those equations, we get uh, Q over A times this term 1 over H1 plus 1 over H2 plus 1 over H3. And if we look back 
at our overall heat transfer equation, we'll see that delta T in that case um, was equal, so if we rearrange it, we'll see delta T was equal to Q over A over U. So in red, I've put uh, 1 over U, showing that it's uh, the same as the term we found before, 1 over H1 plus 1 over H2 plus 1 over H3. So this shows that the resistances are additive. So if you calculate uh, each resistance, H1, H2, and H3, or however many you have in your process, um, you can use them in this equation to find U. There are cases where the area of flow is not the same for every layer. I consider radial flow in a pipe. So let's, let's try to draw this. So we have um, a pipe, we have second layer, and then uh, a third layer. So these are different materials or uh, anyway different mediums through which heat is transferred. So obviously here there are different radii. Uh, so if this is the center of the pipe, there's one first radius and then a second one and a third one. And each radius corresponds to a different area, obviously. So R1 uh, corresponds to A1, R2 to A2, and R3 to A3. Now the individual heat transfer equations will look something like this. And summing them like we did before will give us this equation where A is no more constant but changes at every layer. And it's important to notice that in this case the value of U will vary according to which area is used as a basis. So for example we wanted to use uh, area 1, we'd have to write U1 times a area 1 times the delta T, which gives us that delta T equals Q over A1 over U1. So establishing the same analogy as we did before and multiplying that uh, area 1 for every term in the uh, part in the brackets, we'll find that uh, 1 over U1 equals 1 over H1 because in, in this term the area is multiplied off plus uh, A1 over A2 times H2 plus A1 over A3 times H3. And this is how the overall heat transfer coefficient U is evaluated in radial flow.